love these cold, cloudy mornings during this early rut period. The bucks are kind of spurs activity. The bucks are ready. They're getting pretty ruddy. The does aren't quite ready yet, but boy, the bucks are ready. haven't started ranging far and wide yet. So if I can just see a deer, if I can find the deer I want to hunt, there's a good chance that he'll stay in that area and I can get back on him again. What I'm doing here is kind of working into the wind, quartering back and forth. There's a lot of bucks in this area. This is an area we call the Sandy Romadera. Romadera is just a dry creek bed. Always a lot of bucks in here. And once the rut starts, they start chasing in here. So I'm just easing along, hoping to catch a chase hoping to catch a buck with something on his mind other than me. David Morris's El Cazador Ranch lies in the heart of South Texas' big buck country. But starting with 3,000 acres of prime habitat, Morris applied the management techniques of the Tecumati Wildlife System to improve native vegetation, create food plots, and supply supplemental nutrition. The principle of the Tecumati management strategy is really simple. If you provide more and better food to the deer, you can grow more and bigger deer. And one bonus, and a huge bonus, is that by providing more and better food, you can hold the deer closer to home, thereby losing less deer to outside pressure to your neighbors. You can obviously provide each individual deer with more food by reducing the number of deer that you have. But I don't like the idea of having to reduce numbers to get more food to the deer. I like having a lot of deer. So I'd rather increase the food supply than I had decrease the deer population. Well, you have three options of providing more and better food. One is to improve the quality of the native habitat. But there's a limit to what you can do depending on your habitat. And everybody is familiar with supplemental feeding. But the problem with that is that you habituate the deer and the deer become more like livestock than wild animals. How do you get more and better food to those deer so that you can grow more and bigger deer without stressing the native habitat, without habituating the deer, how do you do it? And the answer is food plots. Fresh grape here. This made looks like last night because it got a little drizzle, a little mist. That's pretty fresh. This is headed over toward that Sendero. That Sendero has got fresh regrowth buffalo grass on it. They like to come in there and nip that grass. We've mowed that. When that fresh grass puts back out again, the deer like it. So these over there, it's kind of like a food plot in the woods. Here's the amazing thing about this ranch. Until the rut comes in, I don't know what's out there because well-fed deer are hard to hunt. These bucks are invisible for 10 months out of the year. I do not see them until the rut starts coming in. So this is a time of discovery for me to go out on the ranch and see what kind of deer our program has produced. The wind's blowing back down through here. I think we're gonna ease up here this mesquite tree and see if we can rattle something in. Of all the big bucks found on El Cazador Ranch, David has his hopes set on a giant 10 pointer he caught on his Reconyx camera back in October. I saw a big rack. That could be the buck I'm after. The wind's perfect, it's in my face. One of these over here, I should be able to cut them off over there. I'm looking for a gem here. I'm looking for an exceptional buck, a top end buck. And to find that buck, you usually have to work your way through a lot of bucks to get to that type of deer. Get on the ground, look over bucks, find a big buck, and then go after him. Target that deer, that was my plan. They see me here, but they can't make out what I am because the noise tells them it's a buck. What David doesn't know is that by staying out of sight, he also cannot see the deer he has set his sights on earlier in the day. 
I really like the grunt in combination with, with rattling. It's kind of like a short range teaser. Without a warning, a third buck appears and pins David down. It's a good solid 160 buck. That's a 160 plus 10. Big wrap around 10, but he's not the deer we're after. David Morris is after a giant buck on his El Cazador ranch, but doesn't realize that it's hiding in plain sight right in front of him. This beautiful 10 pointer, he came up and pinned me. He just had me locked down. And when I looked past him, just raised my binoculars up and looked, lo and behold, there is my buck. This is the buck I'm after, but I can't move because this other buck has got me pinned. I'm locked down, I can't move, and I'm dying just to come blowing up from there, try to get the shot. But I knew if I did it, everybody was gonna blow out of there, and now that area would start feeling the pressure. So I had to wait. He turned around, he tried it off, everybody spooked, and now I'm beginning to get worried. Now I think this deer might know he's being hunted, and this area is going to start feeling the pressure I'm putting on him. He saw me, but he really wasn't spooked. He knew something wasn't right. He's got to be well in the 180s. He's just a giant. We're going to come back here this afternoon. Boy, we were close. We were close. Pretty good bug there, but he's not, he's not what we're looking for. The big buck I'm after lives right in here. And right over there, there's a network of senderos, and we've seen him on it. I'm kind of working into those senderos. I've got to stalk around this area, but I got to be careful not to pressure the deer so I lose my opportunity. And so the deer get nocturnal, or they move out of the area. So that's the challenge. It's a fresh buck rub. He made a little scrape right here. Again, this looks like it's this morning. Look here, he tore this bush up here. This is what we call good sign. Pretty good buck, he worked out the bush over. I think we're gonna go right over here and rattle, see if we can get this boy out. I just need to be able to see downwind. When you're after a specific deer in a specific area, your best chance of killing that deer is early in the hunt, before the pressure starts to take a toll on the area, before the buck knows he's being hunted, before he changes his pattern. Some Daryl's right up there. So I went into that area knowing that I needed to take this deer quickly, and that was going to be a challenge because this was a big old buck. I see big antlers. There's a big buck over there. I'm not sure what he was, but boy, I saw big heavy antlers. He's on that Sidero about, probably about 80 or 100 yards from me. See, the key is to see that deer before he sees me. And that is not easy. When you're on the ground with a big buck, you're in his element. All the odds are in his favor and they're working against you. There's enough wind now that it's kind of masking my movement. So I'm gonna to try to get over there so I can see down at Sendero, maybe to that olive tree. But I didn't want to get right out in the broad open. I tried to work the edge of cover, tried to stay next to brush, just tried to kind of tuck myself in and just ease along, just ease along. Let the deer make the mistake, not me make the mistake. That's my buck, I saw the fork. That's my buck. That's him, that's the buck I'm after. I'm gonna have to crawl from here. I gotta be very careful with these dolls. He's right there, he's probably 80 yards away. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get set up and then I'm gonna rattle and see if I can get him to stand up straight. Maybe walk this way a little bit, give me a shot. I'm afraid to expose myself with those other deer there. I had seen enough of this deer to know this was very possibly the biggest buck I had ever shot on my ranch. And I'm gonna tell you what, could well be the biggest buck I've ever shot. What I'm hoping he'll do is when I rattle, he'll stand up, maybe take a step this way. If I can just get a good frontal shot on him. Once you get to this position, now you're on a time clock. Your time is running out. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it. Got him, I hit him, I think I did. Darn, I can't believe he ran. 
my heart sank. My heart absolutely sank. Because that deer, this monster buck, maybe one of the biggest deer I've ever killed in my life, he blew out of there like he had not been touched, like he hadn't been touched. I didn't hear that bullet hit. But it looked good and it felt good. That thing is a giant. I didn't hear that bullet hit. I don't see any blood. I don't see hair. I don't see a darn thing. I knew, I knew those crosshairs were locked in his chest. Or I thought I knew it. Look here, he broke this limb off when he came through here. This is broken off. Came right through here, just running tracks. He came right down this trail, running. Where's the blood? My experience is when they run over about 50 yards in this thick brush and this grass, it is not good. They're very hard to find. I don't like this. I don't like this. I like it. I like it. I see him right there. There he is right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Look at those times. Look at there. This is the biggest 10 pointer I think I've ever shot. Just look at this. He's got this extra point off his base. It's got a split here. This thing's got it all. Look at the mass. This is what the Tecumani food plot strategy does. It grows absolute monsters. People say South Texas deer don't have mass. You give them food, they got mass. Look at this thing. Look at these brows. Look at the brow tines on this deer. He may be, he may be the biggest 10 pointer I've ever shot. The effectiveness of the Tecumani management system still amazes me. You know, as Jeff Foxworthy said, the truth of it is greater than the lie. And buddy, does it work. 205 and 5 8. My <laughs> goodness, I never dreamed. I never dreamed. Praise the Lord. That's the biggest deer I ever killed right there. And he looks it.